Namo Yitafa, good morning. Thank you for joining me for a daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The fourth mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by unmindful speech and the inability to listen to others, I vow to cultivate loving speech and deep listening in order to bring joy and happiness to others and to relieve others of their suffering. Knowing that words can create happiness or suffering, I'm determined to speak truthfully with words that inspire self-confidence, joy, and hope. I will not spread news that I do not know to be certain and will not criticize or condemn things of which I am not sure. I will refrain from uttering words that can cause division or discord, or that can cause the family or the community to break. I am determined to make all efforts to reconcile and resolve all conflicts, however small. We're reading Ajahn Chah's collection of Dhamma talks, Bodhiyana, and we're in the section on questions and answers. Question. How can we overcome lust in our practice? Sometimes I feel as if I'm a slave to my sexual desire. Answer. Lust should be balanced by contemplation of loathsomeness. Attachment to bodily form is one extreme, and one should keep in mind the opposite. Examine the body as a corpse, and see the process of decay. Or think of the parts of the body, such as the lungs, spleen, fat, feces, and so forth. Remember these and visualize this loathsome aspect of the body when lust arises. This will free you from lust. Question, how about anger? What should I do when I feel anger arising? Answer, you must use loving kindness. When angry states of mind arise in meditation, balance them by developing feelings of loving kindness. If someone does something bad or gets angry, don't get angry yourself. If you do, you're being more ignorant than they. Be wise. Keep in mind compassion, for that person is suffering. Fill your mind with loving kindness as if you were a dear brother. Concentrate on the feeling of loving kindness as a meditation subject. Spread it to all beings in the world. Only through loving kindness is hatred overcome. Sometimes you may see other monks behaving badly. You may get annoyed. This is suffering unnecessarily. It's not yet our Dhamma. You may think like this. He is not as strict as I am. They are not serious meditators like us. Those monks are not good monks. This is a great defilement on your part. Do not make comparisons. Do not discriminate. Let go of your opinion as watch your opinions and watch yourself. This is our Dhamma. You can't possibly make everyone act as you wish or be like you. This wish will only make you suffer. It's a common mistake for meditators to make, but watching other people won't develop wisdom. Simply examine yourself, your feelings. This is how you will understand. Question. I feel sleepy a great deal. It makes it hard to meditate. Answer. There are many ways to overcome sleepiness. If you're sitting in the dark, move to a lighted place. Open your eyes. Get up and wash your face or take a bath. If you're sleepy, change postures. Walk a lot. Walk backwards. The fear of running into things will keep you awake. If this fails, stand still, clear the mind, and imagine it is full daylight. If nothing works, then just go to sleep. Lay down carefully and try to be aware until the moment you fall asleep. Then, as you awaken, get right up. Don't look at the clock or roll over. Start mindfulness from the moment you awaken. If you find yourself sleepy every day, try to eat less. Examine yourself. As soon as five more spoonfuls will make you full, stop. Then take water until you just until just properly full. Go and sit. Watch your sleepiness and hunger. You must learn to balance your eating. As your practice goes on, you will feel naturally more energetic and eat less. But you must adjust yourself. Why must we do so much prostrating here? Prostrating is very important. 
It is an outward form that is part of practice. This form should be done correctly. Bring the forehead all the way to the floor. Have the elbows near the knees and the palms of the hand on the floor about three inches apart. Prostrate slowly. Be mindful of your body. It is a good remedy for our conceit. We should prostrate often. When you prostrate three times, you can keep in mind the qualities of the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. That is, the qualities of mind, of purity, radiance, and peace. So we use the outward form to train ourselves. Body and mind become harmonious. Don't make the mistake of watching how others prostrate. If young novices are sloppy or the aged monks appear unmindful, this is not for you to judge. People can be difficult to train. Some learn fast, but others learn slowly. Judging others will only increase your pride. Watch yourself instead. Prostrate often. Get rid of your pride. Those who have really become harmonious with the Dhamma get far beyond the outward form. Everything they do is a way of prostrating. Walking, they prostrate. Eating, they prostrate. Defecating, they prostrate. This is because they have got beyond selfishness. May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. Sadhu. 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 Thank you for joining me this morning.